doesn't really play anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, Junior's got some stuff. And if you haven't experienced it, then uh, it's, it's a whole other world. And this is, again, like, Junior's one of those kind of zonery characters. Can definitely play a more of a setup game, especially when you have the Mecha Koopa yeah. uh, in, the, in the mix of things. And that is Raito's Q. Start playing Duck Hunt and not Banjo. As soon as right. he gets that zoner matchup. He's, had, he's been having to deal with it a lot, actually, in his bracket. He had a Mega Man, a Banjo, and now <laughs> Bowser Jr. Yeah, man, this is, this is the zoner This is the zoner pool. All right, but those are the up airs coming out. Already so much damage from Tater Nader. And he's looking to just keep the pressure up immediately. You saw the chase right afterwards with the Koopa car. Good, right returning fire. Finally getting to toss out his can. Getting to have a little bit of peace and quiet. But otherwise, yeah, not even jumping up and trying to meet Taternator after that can explosion, right? Raito just yeah. waiting to see what Taternator does out of hit stun. It turned out to be nothing. So it's like, okay, I'm not, not going to try to commit to anything against that. And he's kind of like tracking his movement a little bit. Because the thing is that for some reason with these zoner matchups that we've been doing, on top of that, it's been, wow, he DI's super in for that. Right. It's it's a DI trap because um, I, I think that it was... Or throw will kill. But right there it wouldn't have, I don't think. No, it's not that. It's because the can was sent in that di diagonal direction. So you're DI'ing in so you don't hit the can. I got you. Yeah, it's. I, I saw a part of it like in a duck hunt tutorial. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good catch from Tater. Not gonna kill though. So we keep seeing these matchups where Raido is playing against somebody who has like a side B that's a really great movement option at a disadvantage, and then he <laughs> starts to try to look to abuse it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking for right now. Is I'm looking to see if Raido starts taking advantage of the Koopa car when uh, Tater's in disadvantage. I mean, like, he, he set up the gunman and then just immediately put up shield. I think with the assumption that, okay, there's a chance Tater Nader's just going to plow right through this thing. Right. There's going to be, oh, no damage after that. The big thing, though, uh, Tater is familiar with this matchup. I'm sure he's played Nintendo a couple of times. Yeah, once again, the can trying to meet the face of Wendy. Not going to make it high enough so the Koopa car knocks it away. That's a really interesting interaction between the Koopaling and the... Can? Or the Mecha Koopa, not the Koopa. Link. The, yeah. the, the Mecha Koopa in the can, yeah. Oh! Nice. Pop, pop. Yeah, th that's just going to force Duck Hunt to do something in response to the, the cannonball. And then, yeah, uh, Wendy's going to have the ability to punish that. Oh, the air dodge out of the up is so important for Duck Hunt yeah, in this game. That was a rinse and repeat situation where you actually had to commit super early to go get him. Yeah. But once again, the Mecha Koopa being sent out, just eating the can of beans. I like that, just catching it, tossing it right back to Tater Nader. Yeah, take your projectile back, man. I mean, that's all Duck Hunt get, has done to them most of the time. He's honestly just playing fetch when he catches the the Mecha Koopa and tosses it back. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Oh, F smash the ledge. Might clip him, wasn't able to get it there. Tater, all he needs is like one good hit and he can do it. But, I mean, Raido knows that, right? That's what he loves stringing out against people whenever he gets that stock lead. But Taternator able to catch it regardless. Looking so hard for that up smash and catching it, too. Such a long-lasting hitbox and still so lethal. All right. Raido's turn once yes. again to start talking. Ooh, wow. That's a lot of knockback. That's double, scary. Double jump used, but still able to touch ground. A-OK. -okay. 95% difference between these two guys, though. And Raido... Still looking to build up that space and close it out as, as calmly as possible. Tater looking for something, kind of a desperation play. Overcommits a little bit, but doesn't like, you know, overextend himself afterwards as well. Yeah. The important thing is that if you overcommit, like you just accept the fact that you've overcommitted and then you just take the disadvantage and eat it. Mm -hmm. And the thing that was like also cool is that, that ledge pressure, right? Like Raito was just like standing there waiting for Tater Nader to flitch or roll in or something and Tater Nader didn't give it to him. It's just like, all right, I'll exist in this corner. It's a like, supremely uncomfortable position for a while. Oh, throw, he DI'd in again. But he manages to air dodge out just, yep. just barely. But you can see why that situation's scary, right? Because you have that can right there. Yes. And like mentally you're thinking, well, if I DI into the can, I'm at 180. I could still die there. Like, Woo. But being caught by that up air is still going to do the trick. Yeah, right there, I think what happened was that Raito was expecting him to DI away because last time he got hit by the down throw up air, right? And he tried to react so to the DI away. So he tried to react away. to the DI away with the can. Yeah. But since he DI'd in, he's like, oh, wait, he DI'd in. I got to go up and uh, get him. A yeah, and it's late. just a little bit. Yep. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. It's so fun how, like, these little mind games essentially, like, just get created depending on who you're fighting and what they know about your character and what they're learning and stuff. Right. And there might be, like, sometimes a lot of these kinds of things are, like, almost completely unsubstantiated. 
but in your mind you found a justification for it. Like, oh, he's thinking this way, so I, he's gonna, definitely going to mm, do this. And yeah. then you're just totally mind game yourself. <laughs> Ooh, but these the guys way. definitely have been like layer upon layer. Just that ping pong combo on. with the can. Very oh, nice yeah. stuff. Already 73%. This is the it, always may, it always reminds me of like Manat from uh, Street Fighter or Absa from Rivals of Aether. Just so cool to see. Ooh. So Beautiful. One interesting thing about the up tilt, uh, it actually sends behind Duck Hunt. We used to think that the rule was that when the direction that Duck Hunt was facing, when he does the move, is the direction that the can goes when you tap B. Yeah. We've since like disproven that, and now it's like the direction that the dog is looking or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's completely different than what we thought it used to be because we were like, oh, these are the exceptions and this is why. Like, eh, who knows? Yeah. But it turns out that it's actually just like the direction they're looking or something. It, it's it's I remember back here especially was was one of those arcane examples where it's just it sends the it changes the facing of the can and right. you, you it doesn't make intuitive sense but it does. Whoa! That's the can trade. Yeah. Just gonna go ahead and take that frame one. Gladly take ten percent to to kill Wendy. Woo. Early up B and it manages to land right on his can to defend himself right after. Yeah. His. I really like Tater going out for that though. That was definitely a situation where he could have gotten it and gets that back air anyways, seals out the stock. This is pretty much even Tater chill. I, <laughs> I mean, the, the offstage pressure on Duck Hunt is just so absolutely critical. That's kind of what you have to be chewing on when you're fighting Duck Hunt. It's like, yeah, I'm getting hit a whole bunch, but if I get this dog off stage once, yeah, like exactly, I'm gonna go exactly. to town. And that's how you soothe yourself by just remembering what it's like when you finally get him off stage. And we've started to see Raito start to you know, pick up those side Bs right before Tater's able to throw him out in disadvantage. Mm -hmm. to see if he continues to punish it or not. Tater might have to switch up his game a little bit. Start to just kind of fall instead of doing the side B onto the stage. We know he likes to land high, so. And that falling nair just barely saving Tater Nair's life, but he's keeping things so close, and this is him looking again for that edge guard. Doesn't quite get the chase. Yes, Tater was all over the roll in right there, uh -huh. so Raido ended up jumping, and he totally avoids the, the, hammer, swing. the hammer swing on the come up there. Looking yep. still, just coming in so hard with all these aerials. Staying there, just wanting to even it up again. Once Woo! again, gets an aerial in pretty much the same spot he did in the previous stock, too. Yes. Chasing it down, keeping it even. Nearly 0% apiece, but it's changing fast with these uh, juggles from Raido. He's air dodging a lot. We'll see if Raido you know, takes note of that. Give me a side B, bit of a commit. Oh, I, I jump. Yeah, he just like, don't jump, please. <laughs> he just wanted you to try punishing him a little bit too early. Raido gets bop, booped. A little bit for that. Tater Nader. Ooh, that Look. was unfortunate. He tried to pick up the Koopaling and just did not work. Oh, oh. <laughs> the first swing doesn't connect. Just keep swinging for the fences. He just charged up smash or forward. What just happened? Intimidation edge guard just happened, Slep. Wow. Where we, we had Raido already commit to an early up B, yeah. right, to make it back. And then to react to that, Tater Nader starts charging forward smash. And Raido does the mental calculation of, I can't drift in far enough to get around this forward smash, I don't think. So he just starts drifting back to try to barely right. go around the forward smash and still snap the ledge. And that is so hard to do with Duck Hunt's drift, and he just barely doesn't make it. I think the answer there is, well, there's two answers. Number one, Tater angled that forward smash up for some reason. Couldn't tell you why. Because uh, if you angle down, then you can get the two frame, right? In case he air dodges the ledge. Right. The other option is just air dodge over him or through him. Which is like a super, super commitment. And, but at least you don't die. I don't know. But he couldn't do that because he already up beat further away. And you can't air dodge after up beat. You can only cancel up beat with air dodge. So he wouldn't oh, be able to no, air dodge. I had no idea. Yeah. So like that, that oh, option. Oh, because he went into special fall. Right. Yeah. Okay. So like Raido just didn't have that option. Right, right. Yeah. So like Tater Nader controlled that situation really well when he realized that like Raido had committed early. Yeah, that's great coverage. Oh, the, the Mecha Koopa just walks through the can. It walks like into it and it like. It stops this. It, like, hello. Stops it. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Dodges right pass and catches the roll away. But Tater is not able to find too much more on the juggle. Still just sticking to Raido so aggressively, though. Just wants to make Raido feel as uncomfortable as possible Ooh. and ends up getting forward smash for it. Raido's just like, stay out of my space. Respect me, please. Yeah, Raido, what's giving him a lot of mileage here is those clay pigeons, right? The clay pigeon combos have been huge for Raido into, you know, as far as getting his percent goes. And then he's just able to take those stocks a little bit earlier than Tater is ready for it. Mm. And that's again the, the principal thing about Duck Hunt is controlling the value of your stocks, right? You have to be so careful about what sort of commitments you make because if you do something that lets Duck Hunt kill you at 100%, you did him a big solid. 
Oh, expecting a high recovery there. Oh, no, we wanted to cover uh, yeah, neutral wake up. Yeah, no, yeah, roll it. Or roll it. It was neutral wake up with the with the actual explosion. Ooh, S Smash going to do it. Yeah. Neutral wake up with the explosion, and then he drifts back and covers the roll with the hammer swing. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really. I love when people just run away from moves and then they just keep going. <laughs> kind, of the, kind of kind of a stare down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They're they're testing each other's nerve. <gasps> he rolled right into him. He didn't do anything. Again, it's about what you're ready to react to, Slutton. You yeah. can't react to everything all the time. He was ready for him to like do some can shenanigans or something like that. I'm not sure what it was exactly. But <laughs> totally off the mark. Wow, that sniper gunman catching him from across the stage. Okay, Tater, high percent. All right. That's not going to do anything just yet. Yeah, no, Duck Hunt isn't going to really kill with a throw. Yeah, he needs a can to kind of set up into, and there's the can right there. 207, yeah. that's going to do it. Just sitting on the can. That's honestly something that Duck Hunts love doing if they have the lead and they feel uncomfortable. They just literally sit on it because anything you do to them while they're blocking, they can just ping the can and uh, they can catch you for yeah, it. Exactly. The, the way to handle that situation, actually, is you just sit there and let the Duck Hunt do it because the can blows up by itself. Yeah, it will eventually. Yeah. And their shield's going to get smaller and smaller as they wait. Mm hmm Oh, I love That's that to so protect good. himself, but then Tater, even smarter, just takes his time and watches it happen. I think he actually made a mistake. I think he didn't want to do get-up attack because his get-up attack hit the can away, and that's what was keeping him safe from being punished in that situation. I, I mean, he, didn't he do get-up attack because he pinged the can, and that's a B-button input? That's what, I'm not sure. Yeah. All but right, in any case, the gets the force. Ooh. Yeah. Taking out Taternator. Taternator having such a good showing uh, in the first and second game, but Raido just kind of taking control of it in the third one, yeah. just keeping him at arm's length, especially the way that game started where, like, Tater was, was definitely feeling the momentum from the previous game and wants to keep up that pressure, but then right. Raido was just throwing out such strong hitboxes right in his face over and over again as Tater Nader closed that gap, and that just caused a huge lead for uh, Raido. And we see what happens once Raido establishes a big it's lead. so hard. He just, he snowballs. Yeah, he snowballs really, really hard. His ledge trapping is amazing. His set play is amazing. He forces you to choose options that you're not super comfortable with, and then he just is ready to punish him. He, he just has amazing coverage. And, yeah. You know, that's what we saw on display right there. We've got an amazing match coming up right now. Tell me about it. We've got the number 19 in the PGR versus the number 49 in the PGR. That would be Kameme versus Suarez. Yeah. This is another pool's finals. Uh, Kameme, of course, being an amazing, amazing player, uh, likely to see the Mega Man today, probably not going to see anything weird. Uh, we know that he does have a couple of pocket characters.